most men live lives of quiet desperation. It's one of my favorite quotes ever because it's true. You just, you're just in this world where you just can't wait to just run away. But I think one of the reasons why these people have this deep-seated anger and resentment is there's a bunch of people out there that have these lives that are deeply unsatisfying because I think there are so many people that are working all day long doing something that is deeply unsatisfying and and almost painful yeah, to them. Yeah, soul killing. Soul killing. Yeah. They're stuck in traffic all day and then they're stuck in a cubicle after that. They 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 relish the time to take a sh in the bathroom and look at their phone. I mean, they literally do that. That's a, a highlight of someone's day. They get in traffic on the way home. They get home after that. They're watching television. I think if people have a regular day job, if you could just find some one thing that you do as a passion project and just keep building on it, just keep at, keep watering it, keep adding fertilizer, keep giving it attention, keep giving it focus, and you can escape. You can escape and you can be self-serving. You could be okay. You're gonna be okay. Look, man, for making furniture feels good. If you can do that, you could you could cut those corners perfectly and sand everything down nice and stain it, and then it's done and you get this satisfied, and you sell it to someone and that pays your bills. That is infinitely more satisfying than being stuck in some fucking cubicle working for someone that you don't want to work for, having to have these stupid fucking office meetings, talking to people in human resources, sitting down with your supervisor where they evaluate your job performance. And you know, you're not really, you know, you, you really need to be enthusiastic about this company. This company is your future this kind of like you like kill me now you know there's a lot of people out there that would way rather do something else and i hope they understand that they can and people that are trapped in bad situations one of the problems is you feel like this is your future and you can't get out of that there's no hope there's no light at the end of the tunnel there's no rainbow and if you feel like that that alone can be incredibly defining and limiting but if you can look at if you look at yourself objectively and say, okay, I'm in credit card debt, I'm working in a shitty job, I, I, I don't like what I'm doing, but I have some ideas. I need to feed those ideas. I, have fe I, I need to feed them and water them, and I need to set aside a certain amount of time every day to just try to make those things happen. You can do that. Everyone has a different personality. They have different, different interests, different, different things that they would be really satisfied pursuing. That's not encouraged. The, the, what's encouraged is go find a job. What's encouraged is go find some place that you can shove yourself into. Go find a square hole that you can stick your round peg and just and jam it in there and shave down the top and the bottom so you slide in with all this extra space on the sides and feel like shit for the rest of your life because you need a job, because you're in debt, because you have credit cards, because you have student loans, because that's what everybody does. And so you do it too. That's what's wrong. You, you have an apartment you have to pay for. You have a car you leased. You have a wife that you have to feed. You have a child you have to raise. You have, to, you have your mortgage. You have your this. You have your that. And that's where it all comes from. Well, the opportunity takes place usually when you're young and you don't have any responsibility. That's when you have your options. Well, your options are severely limited the more you gather right. responsibilities. Like if I had to, as a 51 year old father of three, married man, pays taxes, has a house and a mortgage and a business and all that jazz. If I had to quit everything now and struggle the way I struggled as a stand up comedian, it would never work. But the only way I could be this person now is if I took that chance when I was 21, when I was dead broke and had my cars repossessed and all that stuff. That's the only way you you ever get where you want to go. You have to you have to take a path that's dangerous. And most people want to take the safe path. And the safe path leaves you stuck in quiet desperation almost every time. It's hell. But can people just make that change? I mean, yes, look, you can, I believe they but can. You have to plan it out. The way you can change is you have to put aside enough money to give yourself a window. And then you have to have a plan and you have to spend all your waking hours outside of whatever sh job you do planning your escape. And you have to come to the realization very clearly that you f***ed up and you got yourself stuck. So whatever you're doing, you have to do it like your life depends yes. on it. If you're going to 
try to be an author and you're working eight hours a day plus commuting plus family responsibilities or whatever else you have whatever time that you have you have to attack like you're trying to save the world you're trying to save your life you don't want to drown that one and a half hours a day that you have to write god damn you better be caffeinated and motivated you got to go you got to get after it and you got to have discipline that's most people don't have those things most people don't understand what it's like to to really go for something and to know that the consequences of not doing that are horrific there are so many people that would be so much happier making $27,000 less a year and the only thing they have to do is sell their current home where they only use 18% of the home anyway and buy a home that has two less bedrooms so they don't have to have the job that is paying to maintain the lifestyle that they've propped up for themselves and their life will be like disproportionately better because there's a lot more people living that than what you, like as many entrepreneurs as they are that should be employees, there's way more people that basically build a life around how much they're earning, get to a place where they hate what they're doing to earn, have the opportunity to still do something that earns 20,000 less that they love, but they're golden handcuffed by worrying about what car they drive or where their house is because they actually care about other people's opinions and nobody has the gear to take a step backwards. The inability to take a step back, to take step, four steps forward in happiness based on other people's opinions of watching you take a step back blows my fucking face off. When do you quit your job and go in? When you can afford it. Happiness is so unbelievably addictive and it makes me so sad that so many of you created golden handcuffs for yourself that aren't letting you leave your job because you need to make 130,000 a year now because you wanted 700 more square feet in your apartment or you wanted a BMW instead of a Toyota. And so you're not happy because you wanted two or three things that mean absolutely nothing. I promise you, when you've tasted both, when you both, when you meet people that have tasted both, I make 180,000 a year and I have stuff, but I'm not happy. And then I went making 94,000 a year but I'm doing what I love and I'm super happy and I have a little less stuff, it's not even close to a debate. So I implore all of you to really dig deep inside of yourselves and try to figure out why you need that stuff. I'm gonna save you time. You're trying to close an insecurity gap. Let me give you another huge hint. Everybody else sucks too, so do you. If you're 21 and you have no expenses and you're living at home, you have to go high risk. As soon as you see any blood in the water, you go. If I'm 21 and I'm at home and I have no expenses and, and I'm making 47,000 euros, pounds, dollars yeah. doing something I don't love, but I want to be a film person and the first person pays me $1,500 or a dollar forever and it works and it went well and she, the boss of this candy store, says, I'm going to tell all my friends about you. I may jump right away. Mm -hmm. I don't have any concerns. If I'm 42 years old and I have three kids and a mortgage and I'm $100,000 in debt because I went to college in America and it didn't get me a good job yeah. and I'm an accountant and I make 137,000 a year which basically pays for my overhead roughly because I bought a house bigger than I needed, I bought a car bigger than I needed, this is cliche American and somebody pays me $1,500 and they're like I'm gonna tell all my friends I'm gonna give up Netflix and my video games and my weekends to eventually get that to 60 or 70 or 80 or 90,000 a year before I say, okay, now I'm at 90, 137. If I actually went all in, I can close the gap on that 57,000. Yeah. Now I'm gonna make the jump because I have three kids on mortgage and debt. Yesterday, Aaron is 25 and single and living at home. Tomorrow, he meets Sheila, falls in love and, you know, a million things could happen. Sheila could be making a million dollars a year. Yeah, Different life. True. Sheila could be making no money, but he loves her so much and she wants to buy handbags every day and now he has a bigger you know, financial problem. <laughs> Sheila wants to be his partner. Sheila, like, he wants to buy handbags. It's not cliche, it's life. But you jump when you can afford to drown. Yeah. You jump when you can afford to drown. What I mean by that is when you jump into the pool, you have to know that you've never swam before and you might drown. And you have to be able to do that when you can. And at 21 living at home, you can. Yeah. Because you can go back and get a job, you have no overhead, right? Yeah. But at 43 with three kids, you might not want to. Yeah. And by the way, 
or you might. You might have such a supportive spouse, Sheila, Aaron's the stay home dad, Sheila's making the 147, Sheila talks to Aaron and says, Aaron, I'm gonna die if I don't jump, I'm 43, and if I don't jump now, I'm gonna be 62 and regret it my whole life, so I'm gonna jump, and if I fail, and the economy collapses and I can't get a job, we may have to sell this home. We may have to move in with our parents in Florida, yeah. but I have to do that and take the loss in front of everybody's yeah. eyes that we're losers and we fucked up mm. because I know myself and I know if I don't jump now, I'm gonna be miserable for 40 years that I was an accountant for my whole life. The reason I want everybody to live the way I do, which is do not care what other people think, mm -hmm. once you go there, you're willing to jump. You're willing to drown. You're willing to move in with your 80 year old parents and look like losers with your kids because you just don't care. The reason people aren't letting themselves get happy is because they value other people's opinions more than they value their happiness. They literally value their parents, their siblings, their best friends, and society's opinion more than their own happiness. Yeah. They value, like, you live your life that you value other people's opinions more than being happy.